What's up guys, Mark here back with another video. I hope you guys are doing really well. Today I'm gonna to do something a little bit different again, which is always good. Uh, I'm gonna do a video talking about print preparation and you know how to make sure your files are good to go for print and stuff like that. Uh, the video is actually a request from a comment on my last video, which is by Emily. So Emily, if you're watching, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Uh, so yeah, to give you guys a quick run down before I get stuck into anything, I'll just tell you a little bit about what I know about print already. So for those of you who don't know, I already run a sticker printing company. So I print stickers for designers and brands and stuff like that. So I have a bit of experience when it comes to digital printing. And for those of you who haven't been following me, you might or you know, you may know that I, I ran a clothing brand called Ironhides for quite a few years. So um, I was doing a lot of screen printing and stuff like that. So when I started the clothing brand, I didn't really have any idea how to get files ready for print and get t-shirts printed or anything like that. So I was doing some Googling and I stumbled across a company called Born and Thread. Born and Thread is owned by Dan Simmons, who is now a good friend of mine. And over the last few years, he was printing all of my t-shirts and sort of coaching me along the way. So it wouldn't be fair to make a video about preparing things for screen print without you know giving some credit to Dan and including him. So I actually just got off a Skype call with him as well. So I might chuck in some audio clips and some other stuff throughout the video while I, I talk about some of the common mistakes he sees and some good advice for color matching and that sort of stuff as well. So thanks to Dan, I've fortunately learned a fair bit about how to set up my files and everything to make sure things go nice and smoothly with screen prints. It's also very, very common for me to be designing for screen prints. So uh, the vast majority of the designs I do end up getting printed on t-shirts. So I have to make sure that they're always in the best you know, format they can be for print. So I know we're already two minutes into this video and you're probably just waiting to get to the stuff. So I, I promise I'll, I'll get right into it really, really soon. But I just wanted to quickly say one other thing before I start showing you guys some stuff. And that is try not to stress too hard about things not being quite prepared for print and not knowing everything. The reason the print professionals exist is because they're the ex experts. That's what they're there for. So uh, if don't don't really stress out that you're going to send a file and it's not quite prepared properly and the printer's just going to go, whatever, I'm just going to print this even though it's going to look like crap and you can just have a crap product, whatever, deal with it, it's your fault. Because they're not going to get any more business from you. It's in their best interest that the print turns out as good as it possibly can, which is why printing companies like mine and Dan's, we, we do most of the prep work for the customer anyway. It's very, very rare that we'd have to charge a fee or anything like that um, for helping people out. It's it's what we do as part of the, the job. So at the end of the day, if you are planning on doing a design and you want to screen print it on some t-shirts and stuff like that, just contact the printer and just ask them if the file's okay and if they need to make changes and stuff like that. Most people will be happy to help and if they're not happy to help, then they don't deserve your money anyway and you should go somewhere else. So anyway, so I want to start by just covering a few little mistakes and some common things that I see in files and stuff like that when it comes to print. The first thing you should do uh, is if you're if your design is going to print, the color mode should be in CMYK. So if you're making a design in Photoshop, so I'll just make a new document here real quick. The color mode should be set to CMYK. Um, by default, a lot of the time it could be set to RGB, which is really, I don't wanna get into the specifics too much, but it's a bit more for digital. So if you were designing something to go on a website or a Facebook banner or something, you would be looking at RGB. Um, and if you design something in RGB and then it's converted to CMYK, in certain color ranges it can have quite a big impact, like a color can turn out to be a lot different to what you thought it was gonna be. So try and stick to CMYK if you can. Another thing is to make sure that your files are at a resolution of 300 pixels per inch. And if you're gonna design in Photoshop, Design either at the size the design's gonna be printed or at a bigger size than that because when you scale down a design, uh, it won't really affect the quality too much, but if you design something that's too small and it then has to be stretched up to fit and it's raster, uh, it's gonna have a lot of pixelation, a lot of problems and stuff like that. So you wanna avoid that at all costs. Um, a lot of the time the artwork just has to be redrawn altogether if, if that's the case or it's just gonna print and look rubbish. Another thing I wanna uh, just cover really quickly is to do with fonts as well. So if you're typing, uh, if you have some text and it's in a font, I'll just quickly use, um, so I've just got some text here that's in a font that I released the other day. If I send this file off to print now as a, an Illustrator file and ask Dan to print it onto some t-shirts for me, when he opens this in Illustrator, he's gonna get an error because he doesn't have this font on his computer. So that can cause a lot of issues. It'll change it to a default font and stuff like that. And it's just a real headache to sort out the fonts. So to avoid that, when you've finished your design, just right click any text and convert it to outline. So instead of being an editable text object, 
it's now just shapes basically think about it like that it's just vector paths and shapes so they can open the file with no issues so another thing I want to talk about that I see a lot is to do with strokes uh, so if I have a design like this where I've just got this simple rectangle it's got a 10 point black stroke on it let's say that I've designed this and it's really really small and I want someone to scale it up and print it for me if I were to scale this up the stroke will stay at 10 points so if it's really really big now you'll notice that there's a lot more white space in the middle of the design so it hasn't scaled exactly how I would have intended it to so to fix that just make sure you expand your stroke so to do that just select any objects that have strokes on them go to object expand done so now that I've expanded that stroke if I scale this shape you'll notice that it maintains its proportions properly if someone sends you like a Photoshop file, for example, and it's in RGB and you convert it to CMYK, how much of an issue, like how bad is that? Like how much does it change the colors and stuff? Oh yeah, you can get massive color shifts, especially with bright neon pinks and colors like that, quite, quite bright. Um, and you'll end up having a very dull looking pink and blue. So what I'll do in that case is I'll actually, um, you can do this cool trick in Photoshop. It's actually what I do when people send me um, Illustrator files as well that aren't Pantone. So with screen printing, we always work with solid coated Pantones. So if you go to your Pantone swatch books, you'll actually see in Illustrator there's a solid coated one in the um, in the Pantones folder. Yeah, yep, yep, in the color books folder. And the solid coated Pantones is actually what we work with, um, only because that's the closest thing to the inks that we get. Pretty much, we can mix to each color in this. Yeah, so the problem is that on screen, like if you go and pick a Pantone, for example, from Illustrator, I will get back to your question. We're getting there. This is all part of it. Yeah, no, this is cool. I'm learning, so that's, that's always good. Yeah, you go and pick Pantone 3275, which is a very tealy color, for example. I've actually got a physical Pantone swatchbook for solid coded, and it has a light indicator in the back of it that will actually show you the lighting in your room and how accurate the lighting is. Wow. Because on screen your screen versus my screen that teal could look very different how much of an expectation do you think there is for people like a designer to send something and know how to separate the colors and like do prep work and stuff like that yeah i don't think so that there's ever any expectation if i can get a good file to work with i'm pretty happy because i can pull stuff apart in minutes and have it ready for print if it's if it's the right file okay so that was really just a couple of, of really really short clips from what was actually a pretty long conversation with dan we ended up talking a lot about the processes for color matching and uh pantone libraries and stuff like that some pretty in-depth stuff so uh, i didn't want this particular video to drag on too much but what i think i'll do is actually use a lot of that conversation to make another video we might even do a sort of a oops, sorry that was my dog running into my chair we might even do a sort of podcast interview type format uh, and get into some more of the print details and upload that as a full video really soon instead. So if you guys are keen on that, just let me know. So I guess that covers a lot of the the sort of overview, the sort of basic things about making sure you're prepared for print. I guess the two main things are, if you can design in vector, it's just gonna save any potential headaches really. It makes life a lot easier because obviously it can be scaled up and down without losing quality. The other thing is make sure that you're designing in CMYK, especially if you're in Photoshop and make sure you're working at a high resolution if you're in Photoshop as well, at a pretty big size. I always just overestimate if I'm doing a design that I think is gonna be A4, and for some reason it has to be done in Photoshop, I'll just design it at A3 instead or something like that so it can be scaled down uh, and still print just fine. But yeah, like I said, vector is always generally gonna be easier if, if you're familiar with Illustrator, definitely jump on that. If not, you can do a lot of designs in Photoshop and then take them to Illustrator to vector them quite easily later on. I've got a tutorial already on my channel about converting sketches and drawings and stuff into vectors using the Live Trace tool. You can also use the pen tool to redraw stuff and, and all that. So yeah, I think that kind of rounds it out as a bit of an overview about print prep. Uh, if you guys have any questions, by all means, ask away in the comments. Let me know what you guys want to learn next as well. I'm always really interested to hear what you guys want to see in videos. Um, we'll definitely touch more on the printing stuff soon, I think. And yeah, if you enjoyed the video, as always, really appreciate a, a thumbs up or if you could subscribe or share the video. And a special thank you again to Dan for all the help. Uh, we had a really good chat. I actually learned so much during that conversation about the different Pantone libraries and stuff like that. So I look forward to sharing all that stuff with you guys real soon as well. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video, guys, and have a great one.